Uh, this is a quick test to make sure that it can hear me. Okay, sorry about that silly intro, but um, let's talk about Vitruvian. Um, they're one of my favorite factions, and they're easily the worst of my favorite factions. Um, so I am going to say right now that they've changed a lot over the time that I played them, and I was never great with them. Uh, by the end, I could get them to work, but I've forgotten a lot. So, standard disclaimer, Duelist is a game that does a really good job of giving you a lot of options in different rarities and in different factions, like in faction and neutral, to accomplish similar goals. So if you've ever played something like Magic the Gathering, you know there's cards that you just can't like proxy. It's not like, oh, well, I just won't run Jace. I'll run this four drop instead. It doesn't work that way. Um, whereas in Duelist, there's usually a similar card in faction or in neutral to help you get a similar style of deck going. It may not be absolutely optimal, but it's not like Hearthstone's like Dr. Boom 7-7 seven, seven with extra benefits versus War Golem 7-7 seven, seven with no extra benefits. Kind of like, ha ha ha, you're poor, it sucks to be you stuff. So uh, with that said, right now in the beta test, we have every single card um, and we have three of every single card. So, or sorry, in the play test. Um, so I will do my best to kind of identify where this stuff goes, but you'll hear me with moderately positive assessments of most things because I think they do have a home, just that some of them, the home is more on the budget deck side, and it's not a bad substitute. Again, like one of my favorite things about this game is you don't get kicked in the teeth if you can't just drop money on it. So anyways, uh, Fountain of Youth. Uh, I thought this was dumb. I was like, why would you play this? I, I don't recall it having this effect originally. But to give you an idea of where, you used, where I saw this, I was like, oh, that's really good. Um, opponent played, do, 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 do. I have to go to a certain neutral here that everyone loves to combo with. And I forget if he's a four drop. Yeah, Keeper of the Veil, which makes a 1-1 one, one copy of another minion. So in this case, he made a 1-1 one, one copy of Emerald Rejuvenator. So he played Emerald Rejuvenator on one turn. I couldn't clear it, which is fairly common. Um, then he played this, targeting Emerald, and played another Emerald, so now he's gained 8. Then he played that uh, copy thing and turned it back into a 4-4, four, four, and maybe gained another 4? I don't remember. Um, either way, actually quite good in those sorts of scenarios. So there are combo decks and stuff where this is good. I'm not sure where it's good in Faction, though, so that's just one of the things I've seen. Siphon Energy, absolutely good. Dispel is a very good thing. Um, the only other Dispel that I can think of off the top of my head it's a spell-based dispel like this. Well, actually, Vanar and Lionar both have options. Uh, so, especially for free, that's incredibly powerful. Absolutely one of two of probably in most decks. Um, Aura's Tears. Uh, for each artifact equipped to your general, give your general plus two this turn. Um, it's a spell, not an equipment, so it's kind of bursty, which I think weakens it. But for reasons you'll see later... Uh, um, Artifact stuff is really, anything that increases your general attack is really, really good because you can give your general blast. And blast is this giant horizontal hit. So it makes your general's attacks AOE and ranged. So you can start really clearing the field. Um, so this is probably in that kind of blast deck. Uh, I don't know if it always goes in it, but it's worth trying. Uh, set a minion's attack to zero until your next turn. I am super curious as to where you exactly use this. Like, obviously this turns off an opponent's creature. I don't know what happens if you try to buff it after that. Like, so I cast this on your, you know, uh, the song high two drop that scales when you cast spells, and like, okay, he's a zero, one, and then you buff him to the moon. I think the buffs still take. So I find this is probably not great, uh, but it's probably an okay removal option in budget decks. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Science First Wish, great card, good reason to play Vitruvian. Uh, buff a minion, draw a card, absolutely wonderful. Uh, easy to run three of in most decks. Bone Swarm, not amazing, but not as bad as it looks, uh, especially early game where the opponent will like you know drop maybe two or three minions, or especially if Abyssian's popular with their swarmy nature. Um, this can do a ton of work. So a little bit of a meta-dependent thing, but I like running this. Uh, Cosmic Flash, give a minion plus one, plus three, and provoke. This is... Odd. Um, you're very weak, of course, to Dispel. It just removes all this. And it's a 2-drop that's giving you, like, a little bit less than a 2-drop's worth of power, in my opinion. So I'm not sure where you play this. And Provoke is a fairly weak effect. Uh, it doesn't scale super well, so you're probably just better off running the 1-4 2-drop uh, with Provoke in neutral rather than running this. But maybe there's a deck that makes this work. 
Doomcaster, give another Dervish plus two plus two. This does not disappear at the end of your turn. So Dervishes, for the record, are these guys. They're little two twos that pop out of these obelisks. So it makes a 2-2 two -two into a 4-4, four -four, and the 4-4 four -four sticks around. But if the 4-4 four -four hits anything, it's probably now a 4-2. I enjoy this card, but I don't run a ton of them. Uh, maybe one or two um, in an obelisk deck, of course, because you need dervishes. Uh, there's some nifty plays you can do with this, but it's not great. Obelisk, 0-6 uh, gateway. Gateway means it spawns one of these dervishes around it in one of the open squares at the beginning of your turn. Um, generally a little bit frustrating because it's hard to place these right so that they get value and don't get easily removed but at the same time for two mana getting a repeated 2-2 to keep summoning over and over and over again can be very strong and they have a lot of dervish synergy so at the very least i think it's a fun card and i think it's good enough that it goes in most vitruvian decks just because it's one of their really good two drops even if you're not doing obelisk stuff these aren't the worst thing to run um it can piss off magmar when they're trying to remove your super super powerful thing with a their two drop removal and this is in the way but yeah uh imperial mechanist uh restore your artifacts to full ability durability i swear he used to have a different effect in a different stat line anyways um i'm skeptical this is worth it even in the artifact deck uh there is an artifact deck for vitruvian that said um again in some sort of budget version i wouldn't mind running him in that deck the stat line is okay uh you know, he's very survivable, so if you're running other buffs or whatnot, this could be good. Uh, like, of course, you're probably running Science First Wish. Because you, you have to remember that most Vitruvians run Science First Wish because the cycles itself. So some of their cards have to be thought of as, this could become a 2-5 for almost free on the next turn. Um, so keep that in mind when you look at their stats. Uh, that said, I probably would, would not go out of my way to fit it. Orb Weaver, Dervish, um, and he's a Dervish, that's important to note. Remember, this buffs Dervishes, they're not all just from Obelisks, uh, it took me a while to notice that. With that in mind, he fits really well into the Dervish deck, because he's a 2-drop that summons two things. What you can do is turn 1, go first, you move 2 forward, you drop him, uh, I believe it's in... I forget exactly how you summon him, but you can basically threaten making a 5-mana play next turn, because you go up 1 mana, go to 3, and then you take both mana tiles with your Orb Weavers, and now you play five. So you could rush out a five drop and they've got some pretty good five drops. So this guy might have more to him than it first looks like. Um, stat wise, he's a two, four for two across two bodies when you think about it. Uh, he does die to a lot of, like pretty much every sweeper kills this though. So just be aware. Pyromancer, absolutely great minion. Um, maybe a three of in every deck, maybe not. Again, I'm not as good with the Truvian staples and whatnot. Drop him it behind you in the back and let him control an entire row. And again, this might become a 3 2 with first wish, and he will just wreck entire games. Like, he'll win a game because someone can't answer a Pyromancer. It can be that good. Um, and even if not, like, they'll go out of their way to do it. Blood Tier Alchemist answers this quite easily. So, when Vitruvians are running Pyromancers, that kind of becomes a problem. Uh, don't know if he hangs out in the top, top tier decks, but I absolutely think he's worth playing with. Uh, Rasha's Curse, right? Yeah, destroy a random artifact equipped to the enemy general, summon a Wind Dervish nearby them. So, Wind Dervish, again, 2-2 Rush, disappears. I swear this didn't exist before, but maybe I'm crazy. Um, for artifact removal, this isn't terrible, because if they're doing some sort of stacked artifact deck, this is kill a random artifact and then hit them once to, you know, deal one damage to every other artifact they still have equipped. Um... I would not hate running this. I'm not sure if I'd run it over the, uh, what's his name? Uh, is that a spitter? Eh, sorry, it's been a while. I'll quickly find him. I'm not sure if I'd run it over Rust Crawler. There's the word. Uh, cause he'll stick around. But if you're doing Dervish Synergy, I think of giving it a shot. I don't know you for this thing. Uh, Curse. Sandtrack, spell. Give a minion this. This cannot move, draw a card. I actually think this has more use than it first looks. I wouldn't run this probably in, again, have everything land. But making, insert, I guess, especially in certain metas against certain decks, this is essentially removal, or it just massively screws up turns. Like, who cares if they've got a healer sitting there? You know, the Mystic Healer that now can't move to take the Mana Orb. Um, and you draw a card. And further, so the cycle really helps you dig for, like, control decks. It helps you set up and... Because of one of your sweepers later cares about how many creatures are on the board, it actually leaves a body there for you to use later. Now, you probably don't want to run this against, like, Abyssian, if that's a very popular 
Um, and in general, there are certain creatures that you don't want to leave alive, but I could see this seeing some play. Uh, Sign Second Wish, draw two cards, great in control. I don't know if I play it in every single Vitruvian deck. I feel like I ran like maybe one or two in almost every deck that I tried to build, just because it's just a solid feature if you can get your board under control to help you keep tempo. Um, sometimes you feel like you don't need card draw at all in this game because it's like I draw two every turn. Uh, but as you start to learn how to handle that tempo, uh, you'll realize that draw cards can be very, very good. And something just this straightforward and this solid is not bad at all. Staff of you here. General gets plus two, plus zero, and this is destroyed. Shuffle a copy of it into your deck. Um, I think this is part of the artifact deck. I don't remember if this was the actual effect, but the fact that you can just make your general into a 4-2 uh, for two is not great. But the fact that this sticks around and keeps winding up in your deck, especially if you can like really grind through your deck quickly, uh, keeps your artifact density high and means you're very likely to have at least four attack, which is very, very big for things coming later. Uh, Astral Phasing, give a minion zero plus five and flying. So this, it looks like it's trash. And it kind of is, but I ran it as a one of in a couple of the Truvian decks because you drop a creature kind of out of the way. Maybe it was like a buff to heck Portal Guardian or maybe it was... Um, their uh, curve topper, there's this scarab guy, and the opponent wouldn't be able to remove it, but they just like get away from it. And the next turn, you buff it even more, give it flying, and put it wherever you want to wipe parts of the board. Um, don't think this makes it into any, uh, you know, again, have everything world. I don't know that this makes it in, except as maybe a cute tech play that people don't expect, but it's not as bad as you might first think. Uh, Fireblaze Obelisk, if you want to go all in on Obelisks, this is your lord, you want to play it. It's a free mana, it summons a 2-2, two -two, but it makes them all 3-2s. Um, it also makes these guys 2-2s, two um, so keep that in mind. It's a, it's a good card. I think you play this, again, like this and the other Obelisk kind of go in a lot of Atruvian decks, just because you want 2 and 3 drops that aren't neutral, um, and this works. And Oasis, give allied means 0 plus 3 and draw a card. I, 3 mana is a lot for... A do nothing. Like, I'm okay with, like, hey, this is kind of removal and it can trips, but three mana buffing all my guys. Again, maybe it's probably quite good against Songhai. They struggle to remove things. It can be very good against um, Songhai. Uh, <laughs> I think it's better against Lionar in certain cases. Um, but I would definitely feel a little mixed on this. I Maybe, again, a zoo deck, I could see this. Uh, I recall Vitruvian leaning on neutrals kind of a lot because they have all these neat spells, but they don't have as many creatures, at least in the core set. Um, so maybe that's what it's for. I'm not sure. Portal Guardian. When you summon a minion, this gets plus one, plus zero. So this goes in Dervish decks because every time they survive and summon, he gets stronger. So it's a, th it's a zero three with Frenzy, uh, which means it also AoEs, um, which is very powerful. It's incredibly easy for Magmar to remove this. It's incredibly easy for um, other people to blank this or like reset it or dispel it, of course. But even then, a 0-7 body with all these different buffs isn't awful. So I think this usually sees play if you're going the Dervish deck or even if you've just gone like this one and the other one and this guy. I could see some value in it, but I don't honestly know for certain if this fits in like a real meta deck or, well, I think there are going to be competitive decks that run off, run this guy, but I wouldn't bet on it. Um, third wish. This turn, give your general plus three, plus zero, and this can move up to three spaces, reduce enemy damage taken by three. So if you're doing an artifact deck, this makes sense. I swear this used to do something else in the original game. I don't remember what. Um, so this probably makes sense in that. Otherwise, I'm not sure it's that good. I mean, it's basically a removal spell. It's saying, hey, you're going to kill something that has 5 HP or less and maybe take no damage from it. A common one is Emerald Rejuvenator, 4-4 four, for four, 4, that heals for 4. Uh, you get to kill it and only take 1 damage. That's pretty good. And the move up to 3 spaces, um, I don't think it's like Teleport or Silhouette Tracer where you can like fly and go through things. That has more value than you think, especially if you're running a sort of control build. Um, to just get away or get around something or go where you need to go, its mobility is way more powerful than it first appears. It's got a really weird middle ground of very strong or not good enough. So, probably playable. Wildfire Rank. This is why you can do an artifact deck. Your general has Blast. Blast can attack multiple enemies in a line regardless of distance. So you basically get a ranged Kamehameha. Uh, you hit everything on the row or the column that you attack, and... It's crazy good, because you don't take counterattacks from this if you're not next to them. Maybe even if you are next to them. And it's just powerful. Um, absolutely a 3 of in artifact decks. 
maybe even a three of in non-artifact decks. This is so good that it can be a staple for Vitruvian, I believe, just because Blast is that good and having Blast on your um, on your general is powerful, and there's a lot of ways to buff your general within Vitruvian. Uh, Windstorm Obelisk, all dervishes can move in additional space. I don't recall if this is any good or not, gotta be honest. I think I ran it in my dervish deck because I was lacking good dervish options. So I was like, well, I need more dervishes. I want a higher dervish density. I'll live with this. Um, that said, my initial, like, again, you know, I suspect this doesn't get played and have everything. Land. And Tropic De Decay, destroy a minion ne nearby your general. Four mana, kill a thing. Um, it's just got to be close to you. This is good. Uh, it goes in their control decks. It's usually one of a two of even in their other decks because it's just such good removal. It's completely conditionalist other than proximity. And most things you want to kill are next to you. Obviously, this doesn't deal with some ranged creature about to murder you, but it's not bad at all. Uh, Hexblade, your general has plus three, plus zero, and your general damages a minion set. That means attack to zero. Okay, so like this right here is just gross um, because now if you don't kill something, you also reduce its attack to zero. This on its own makes them have trouble attacking you. So, I mean, it's just like a Scion's Third Wish that sticks around and is very, very powerful. So, um, I don't know if you run this if you're not going all in on artifacts, but I could believe you run it, uh, even if not. So, as always, look at artifact spells that buff your damage as removal spells and think of them that way. And remember, the removal spells that can happen more than once. It's like, worst case, even if you get hit back each time, that's three creatures that you remove or 15 damage to their general just from you smacking them in the face. So, you know. Good to know. Mirage Master. This transforms into an exact copy of another minion. Um, yeah, just checking. I gotta be honest, I have no idea. My suspicion is there's something where this is really good, possibly even control, because uh, the Trivian have some good curve, to have a couple of good curve toppers, and then, you know, can play the neutral curve toppers as well. Um, and this just gives you a higher density of those. Still, I wouldn't maybe only run like one or two of these as, you know, like, oh, rather than running three copies of this and three copies of that, I can run two and two, and this is the flex. Or you could run three and three in one of these, and now you've got a fourth of whichever one sticks. Uh, another Dervish, three, three. I thought it used to get more powerful when Dervishes spawn. The nearby enemies have minus one, minus zero. I don't know. I would probably play him in a Dervish deck over this, uh, that's for sure. But the stats kind of suck. The minus one does, I think, work on their general because it says enemies. Says minion here. I think this would work on the enemy general, in which case it's not bad. Um, so I'd say again, dervish deck play it. Probably not outside of dervish deck though. I don't think this sees play outside of it. Uh, wind strike, dying wish, a quick a staff if you carry to your general. So again, in the sort of like artifact deck, you play this. Um, I don't think you even have to have a staff of you cure in your deck. This brings one in for you. Its stats are weird. Flying is bleh, but. There's some interesting stuff you can do with this. It's a common, you know, starter card, so I think that's the role it's trying to fill. I don't know that you put this in many other decks. Star's Fury. So summon a Wind Dervish on the space in front of each enemy. This is why I was talking about Sand Trap earlier, sometimes having some use versus, like, harder removal. Um, this can blow up, like, Abyssian and a bunch of other decks out of nowhere. Good players will try to play around it, but you can work with that and go, okay, well, they're trying to play around Star's Fury, so I'm going to do this. I usually ran one or two of these, and yes, it does summon dervishes, and yes, it does, I believe, trigger the heck out of Portal Guardian. So there can be some incredibly explosive turns if you uh, get a good Star Sphere off. So um, absolutely mess with this. Starfire Scare. This is the one I was talking about uh, earlier when I was talking about the 0-4 that lets him fly, Astral Phasing, or 0-5, 3 mana. Um, you drop a Scarab somewhere in the corner, it's a 4-7, that's pretty hard to remove without having, like, a just straight-up strong removal spell. Uh, he's not dying to any sweepers, except Metamorphosis, but we'll get that, get to that. Um, and so, yeah, you, you place this 4-7 somewhere, and they're like, okay, well, I'll just move up, and he's way out of the way, who cares? And then you make him fly, and you blast things, and you just start destroying rows. He's not an awful curve topper. I ran him in my budget Vitruvian, because while I love Vitruvian, most of their decks required a lot of uh, Mythics. And he helped me close out a lot of games. Probably a two of. Uh, don't know if you play him in Have Everything Land, especially because of this guy now. Um, I don't think he used to deal Blast, but we'll talk about that. So Amir here, I know this was run in the Trivium Control. Uh, Dying Wish, deal five to your enemy and kill you for five, and it's a five-five with Provoke. It's just a good card. Um, there's not really much else to say about it, I think. 
Well, like if your opponent's beating on it, you can do things like, um, sorry, I think you can use this to heal it, essentially, bring it back to full health. Um, but it's just a solid effect that really shifts tempo in your favor. Anything that, he, like, I, I can't stress this enough. Healing is really good in this game. In most card games, you're like, well, healing, who cares about healing? It's blah, whatever. Healing's incidental. Healing in Duelist is very, very good. So keep that in mind, especially in a control deck, and thus this goes in control decks. Uh, Dominate Will, take control of the minion nearby your general. So if you don't want to kill the thing standing next to your general, uh, for three more mana, you can mind control it and beat them to death with it. Uh, beat your opponent to death with it. So absolutely great, uh, especially in control decks. Um, you know, taking someone's Divine Bonded super unit and just smashing them to death with it is cathartic. Very, very good. Good players will try to play around this, but it can be very hard to play around it because it's like, well, now I have to suicide all my creatures into the, the Vitruvian general because otherwise they might live and they'll dominate them and mess me up with it. Osirix. Um, again, I don't know if this is what he originally was, but Blast and your general deals double damage. I think in the Artifact deck, this guy's a pretty good curve topper and his stats are, and effects are just solid. So, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's absolutely playable. Uh, so I don't know. Again, uh, my problem with Vitruvian is I really don't know what their t ar their archetypes are outside of like Dervish, Control, and um, Artifact. And I know you can kind of mix and match those. I think they had a Zoo variant. I don't know enough about it to really comment. I do know this is a good card. Time Maelstrom. Take another turn after this one. Now, it's not as strong as some of these because like 9 mana... Uh, means it takes all your mana, you're not playing Time Maelstrom and then dropping, you know, more cards like in Magic the Gathering where you just get enough mana to do crazy stuff each turn. But the fact that, like, you know, you summon one of these, they don't clear it, you Time Maelstrom the next turn, now you're going to attack your opponent for, like, at least 14 or 10 or 8, at worst case for you. It's just really strong. And then remember, you're going to draw two cards. So what this kind of says is take another turn and draw two because you get to draw two off of it for free. So, very good card. Um, going through the neutrals, uh, like I said, there's a zoo variant for them. I don't remember how it works at all. Don't ask me. I believe in it, but, you know, one drops in general uh, aren't good outside of zoo. Um, but, I don't know, maybe there's something here. This guy being the one exception, where if you want to, you know, tech call against certain things, but I don't think he does anything particularly special for Vitruvian. Um, this guy's pretty good in uh, control decks, because more mulling helps you get to your tech choices and whatnot, so you might want to consider him. Uh, when you play a minion with opening gambit, this getting this plus two plus zero. Eh. Um, there's not enough opening gambits for them. I don't think you care too much about this. This guy's always good. Let me just run through. Um, they've got, maybe there's weird cases where you want this for removal, but I doubt it. Uh, always good for combo, maybe. There's maybe a case for this, because again, um, Vitruvian like having bodies for their buffs. So this being a free body for health, when you have things like Amara Healer, they might be a good one to try it. But I gotta say, I'm not sure. Uh, this is going to be on really weak. This goes in every deck. Um, seriously, you can put this in every single deck. Uh, this is actually quite good for Vitruvian because, again, they can very quickly flood the board, uh, especially if you're doing Dervishes, so I would run this in the Dervish build. Um, as I said, you know, tech stuff. Uh, I, I feel like I did run this in Vitruvian, again, because it would stick. Like, remember, any of these can get a plus one, plus one, and turning this into a two, five and can tripping off it is absolutely okay by my book for one month. So as long as, if you're trying, especially if you're running Science First Wish, which you probably are, things with more health tend to be very important because you can make it stick and then you can make it stronger and get more value out of it. Um, there's some real nonsense with this uh, because they've got some very powerful spells and you just get to keep playing them because of this guy. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm sorry. I know, I think this is part of Zoo. I think this is part of Zoo. Um, this is always interesting. I think this, okay, so this was normally in control decks because it used to have damage based on how many cards you had in your hand, um, and it had totally different stats. Now, eh, I don't think this is good enough in them. I'm, I'm probably wrong. Ignore me. Uh, decent removal, even, you know, again, for budget stuff. Maybe there's a spell deck. This is pretty good for them, uh, because they have so many buffs. 
having something you can play from hand with Rush and basically turn into a nuke or removal really, really helps. With a Science First Wish in hand, this reads four mana, deal four damage to something, and maybe have it stay alive, you know, and to screw something up the next turn. Um, I sincerely doubt this matters. Uh, they, you can run him. Um, again, he goes in a lot of control decks just because having this body that keeps coming back gives so much incremental advantage over the course of the game that it really starts to add up. I probably wouldn't, but you could. It's not as good as in Abyssian, of course, but it's one more thing that they have to waste a dispel on, and now maybe they don't dispel your larger creatures. Um, maybe there's something clever for this. No, no. Probably not. As always, he's a good sweeper option if you don't want to do crazy stuff. Um, they don't have a good way to rush him, but nonetheless, you can drop this if it survives. It's like a 3-3 three, three for 3, which isn't bad. It's got Frenzy, which is a great effect. And if you get to buff it, you can make it a 4-4 four, four, even stronger and, you know, really clear a large area. Uh, it forces them to deal with it, basically. Um, I really have trouble with anything, like, ranged, especially for Vitruvian, because... They just already have Blast, so I'd rather be playing Blast. Um, no, no, no. Well, this can be kind of powerful because, again, uh, there's a zoo sort of thing where this can be very useful. Uh, this guy, draw an artifact. This goes in the artifact decks. Um, it's that good. Uh, having it pull an artifact from your deck just to kind of cantrip itself with a pretty good body, still gets hit by Plasma Storm, unfortunately, uh, is not bad at all. Let's see, anything else? He's kind of a control finish. Sorry, he's kind of a control finisher. This goes in every control deck ever, three of. It's a very good card. If you're having trouble, always try running three of him. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Again, a neutral sweeper option. If you're like really struggling for sweepers and you are like, there's a lot of zoo running around, this can be devastating. Similar thing, AoE Dispel. Uh, although a Dispel is not as big a deal for them. Unfortunately, I just don't know enough about Vitruvian to speak intelligently on some of these. I know Shilouette Tracer uh, is a common one. It doesn't look like you would play it a lot, but as a 2-6 that teleports you four spaces, that can save your butt or end in a game. Uh, I don't think you run three of them ever, but you might run one or two. Do -do 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 -do. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, I like the idea, but who knows? I'm sure there's like, again, Vitruvian is very like, you've got to know the game, you've really got to know your build. There's not, it's not as easy to just be like, oh, this would be good because blah, blah, blah synergy. Um, yeah, not that simple. It's not like freaking Divine Bond where, oh, I understand everything. Again, great control card. Dancing Blades, I cannot like speak enough, well enough about this. This is probably one of the best designed cards in the entire game. I lost to a Dancing Blades deck today and I'm playing some brutal spell high thing and someone, you know, played Vanar, ramped up to Dancing Blades early and completely turned the tempo on me in one turn and put me on the back foot. It's just a great card. Um, maybe in a spell heavy deck, I don't think artifacts count as spells though. Uh, nope, probably not, probably not, probably not. Again, they're all kind of tech choices. Um, maybe? I feel like there was something weird with this, where you can use it to loop, like, you know, time warp, and that's your only spell or something, so you can just keep time warping every other turn. Um... Uh, again, a good control topper, uh, because they don't have great, like, they, they've got some good control stuff, but you may not want to play those ones. This is always a good option for control. Um, I don't think any of these others are. Uh, again, I don't think this is great. Maybe as a curve topper for Zoo, I've done that. Jax is, Jax is really interesting because he was a major, major problem when he first came out, but I think he was, like, four mana back then. He's still really good because he gives you all these bodies, and the bodies are in the corner, so certain groups have a really hard time dealing with that before it just takes over the game. So he's always worth thinking about if you're doing something in a later game. Uh, don't play Serpenti, although if you're going to play Serpenti, I think I did play him in a budget Vitruvian deck because I could give him a bunch of health and make him fly over where he needed to be and murder somebody. So always worth thinking about. Um... Yeah, I mean, and then this is always a good control finisher. I think this is a good control finisher. I swear this used to be played, but I don't think it did this. Maybe maybe it is still a good control finisher. I don't know. Um, ditto, 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 maybe. You know, again, I wouldn't play this. I wouldn't play this. So, unfortunately for Vitruvian, I just don't know as much. I'm sorry about this. This is my, like, 
first pass taken of uh, Dervish deck. I don't think this is good, but I was just kind of like, okay, what would I play? I'd probably play that, probably play that. Of course, I play this. I need to get him in there as more of. I always like playing these. It should probably go down, though. Um, I forgot that some of those other cards were Dervishes, so I'd probably put those in instead of like tech choices like Sand Trap. I don't have things like Ephemeral Shroud, which I'm pretty sure I'd play. I've got Emerald Rejuvenator in here with some very high drop stuff. I'm like all over the map here. I like halfway through this deck decided, you know what, let's make a control. Um, so honestly, not a great deck, but it is kind of a good look at like certain staples. This was just what I was like, here, here's a bunch of good stuff. I don't think I could win with this. I haven't tried it except against the AI. So there you have it. Um, that's all I've got for now. Hope you're having fun and uh, I will probably be doing Magmar next. So look forward to that.